أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين إنه خير ناس ومؤين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبا القاسم مصطفى محمد صل على محمد وآل محمد وصلى الله على آل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحنا وجسمنا فداك يا مولانا يا صاحب الأسر والزمان اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Tonight is a very special night We will remember one of those youth which is written in history What do you think we should speak about then? There's only one thing we can speak about tonight Talk about the youth we're youth, you all are youth, uh, and the amazing person that I remember today was an amazing youth. So today we'd like to discuss uh, what makes an amazing youth, and how can we become amazing youth. A few nights ago we had discussed about potential, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a tremendous amount of potential. But you know, a lot of times, I've caught myself doing this, and every, you, you probably would have, is that, you know, when we see someone who's doing well, uh, our excuse is what? Oh, he's lived his life. He's, he's got more time. And uh, that's why he's good at what he does. And for some reason, I feel that that's a very easy excuse to use. But today, I want to discuss and try and get the message across the my time, your time, your time, our time is now. Because nowadays what you find is that the, the number of people that are achieving amazing things, that are breaking records, their age is getting younger and younger and younger. Simple example. For example, a few years ago you'd see footballers, for example, they'll make their debut at age 21, 22, 23 and then slowly 18, and now people are making their debuts at 16. Absolutely. So wow. the people that are achieving great things, they're achieving it much younger. So it's very important that we have to bear that in mind that we need to start achieving uh, or working hard to achieve our potential from now. Don't wait till we grow old. Or the typical example, oh, let me live my life, then when I grow older, I'll start doing good so I get closer to Allah. So yeah. Are you that, yeah, absolutely. It's a very sad thing, especially yeah. when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that one of the precious things before is youth before old, old age. age. Yeah, yeah. so if he says that, we need to follow it. Very right? true, very true. And, and we need to remember that now is when we have all that energy. We have the drive. We have the uh, ideas that come through. And then we can back it up with uh, implementing those. So, what makes a good youth? Uh, what is it about us that we can uh, go on to achieve uh, big and better things? One we've already talked about is that we have a lot more energy yes. when we are young, right? Uh, we have fresh ideas, we have this positivity. Um, we don't have the burden of life on us. You know, a lot of times we feel that we see that people have gone through a lot and as a result they've almost like given up in life or say oh, everything is bad going to happen. We don't have those experiences, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, yeah, it's important to, to be able to achieve all of that and push, uh, push forward uh, when we're young. Absolutely. And um, as a result, we would be able to then, uh, I think once we achieve stuff when we're younger, then we'll be much happier in life. Otherwise, we we'll would constantly be striving and struggling and struggling till we're old and still we won't be happy because we haven't uh, achieved uh, everything in life that we would want to. No, it's, uh, I think that when you are expressing that, there is that, you know, I get that buzz because there is always story time now. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I love stories <laughs> and I have received messages. Can we have some stories? And we thought like COVID-19, is that going to stop us? No way. No. <laughs> We're going to come with those stories anyway. Okay, well, let's take one from the pocket out, an oldie goldie, <laughs> and come out with a story, inshallah. All right. So all these fantastic stories, most of them, they come from Iran. 
So why not this time around? But it's got a twist this time. Are you ready yeah, for the twist? So there was a Mawlana, an Akhund, an Alim, who went on, to, on a bus. And he went from one stop to the other, and he sat down. Suddenly at one of the bus stops, he sees that one youth, a young man, comes on and, and, and he's walking towards him. And he thought to him, the youth of today, look at those clothes, look at those, those hairstyle, the way which they are dressed, they've forgotten religion. That's what he was thinking. He narrates it himself. The bus journey continues. Because he's Mawlana, he thinks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he watches his watch and he sees that the time of namaz is coming, dhuhr is coming. And he says, shall I go and tell the bus driver to stop or not? And he's thinking. Because there are other people on the bus. Mm. You know? Interesting, yeah? yeah? As he's thinking, there is that young man who stands up and walks towards the bus driver. And he just looks at him and he says to the bus driver, Aha, uh -huh, please can you stop the bus? Why? He says, Namaz time. No, 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 no. I've got a time. I've got a schedule to keep here. I'm not going to stop the bus. So he said, aha, uh -huh, please stop the bus. It's time for namaz. First schedule and timetable is Allah's. Allah's. He said, no, no, no. He says, na al-an in otobusro. <laughs> stop it now. And he stopped it. Everyone was looking at that youth. They stopped. They prayed salat. They felt nice after namaz. Inshallah, it was Kabul. And then the bus journey continued. The Maulana started was was says, I am a Maulana and I was thinking to tell the bus driver to stop. How come this youth had that strength in him? And he went and asked him, how come? What happened? And the young man says, well, they, let me take you on a journey. <laughs> Something happened not long time ago. I said, what? I used to live in a different country called France in Europe. Because my parents did not afford for me to live in the central city where the university is, my quarters were further out. In fact, very far out. I had studied and studied and they had saved money for me to go and study. The day of the final exam of the whole university course came. I got ready, I did prepare myself, I was going to go for the exam. I sat on a bus normally to go on that journey towards the university. Do you know what? On that day, the bus stopped because the engine failed. Oh, no. Panic mode. Panic mode. What to do? And he thought, what shall I do? And he was thinking. And he was thinking. And then as he was standing outside the bus, he remembered that his grandmother used to say a certain word. He said, whenever you are in problem, says, Ya Qa'im Ali Muhammad Adrikni, come here, the 12th Holy Imam, and come to help me. And I put my hands up and I said, that was not enough. He says, O oh, Imam, if you come, I promise I will never delay my prayers ever in my life again. That's a bold promise. Huge promise. But the greater promise you have to the Imam and Allah, the greater help will come. True. Suddenly a man comes from far away. He says, Cheshude, what's happened? And he speaks in my native language. And he sa I say, this bus is stopped. Really? And then I look back at that man, and then I look at the bus, suddenly it starts, the engine starts. I look where, and the man has disappeared. Wow. I go and I pass my exam, and from that day, I have made a promise that I will never miss my salat. 
And the Mawlana then, we go back to the time, understands that I can see youth who can be amazing, amazing, which we can learn from. SubhanAllah. And that's the story. And if we go to Karbala, tonight is that youth, the shining star, the shining star. One person after the other goes to the Maidan and they come back dead. Qasim, the son of Imam al Hassan, he thinks, How can I help my uncle? Imam Hussein says, Qasim, you are too young. When I see you, you remind me of my brother Hassan. I will not allow you to go. And Qasim feels, what shall I do? And then he remembers, there is a certain thing which is tied on my arm. And his mother says, go to your uncle because your father said in a situation like this, you should open this letter, give it to him. And Imam Hussein sees that this is a letter from his brother, Imam al Hassan. In this point, use my son, I've sent Qasim for you. Qasim, the young man, goes out on the battlefield and they think, who is this? Indeed, he is the descendant of Imam Ali. And they see this moon coming out and he fights courageously. And one after the other of the enemies, they fall. And then happens that he bends down to correct his sandal. And one person comes and hits him. Qasim falls over. And then in that commotion, all the horses, they trample over Qasim. Imam Hussein's heart breaks. He says, you are Qasim, the son of my brother. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajil faraja. Jabri daasir se chini me sada deti rahi. Tu na ya aghazi. Jabri daasir se chini. Ne sada de ti rahi tu na ya Ali Imran kaha Or zindan kaha Ye behen qayt hui Tu na ya aghazi Jabri daasir se chini मैं सदा देती रही तूने हमको पानी ना मिले तेरी खुशबू तो रहे तेरे बाजू ना कटे चाहे मशकी जाच दे ये मगर हो ना सका तेरे बाजू है जुदा मुझ पे है तश ना लबी तू ना या गाजी जबरे दासर से छिनी मैं सदा देती रही तू ना या धूप में थू था शजर تجھ سے آباد تھا گر ہے برہنا میرا سر کیا نہیں تجھ کو خبر اے علمدار وفا اس بہن کو با خدا تجھ سے دارس تھی بری تو نہ یا غازی جبر داسر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی تو نہ یا آگئی شام میں علم لٹ گئے اہل حرم ریت پر جلتی ہوئی ہو گیا تھندہ علم پرسا دینے کے لیے مجھ سے ملنے کے لیے آگئے بابا علی تو نہ یا غازی 
جبری دا اثر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی تو نہ آیا کیا کہوں شیر میرے بیری دا ہم کو لیے یہ مسلمان سارے شہر در شہر گئے خلقت کوفہ کبھی خلقت شام کبھی اور رہا ہم پہ ہسی تو نہ آیا غازی جبر دا سر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی دو نایا کتنی بے بستی بہن اے شہن چاہ وفا نام لے لے کے میرا جب یہ ظالم نے کہا ناز تھا جس پہ تجھے اب بلاؤ نہ اسے اور میں روتی رہی تو نہ آیا غازی جبر دا سر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی تو نہ آیا غازی قید خانے میں قضا جب سکینہ کو ملی دیکھے کرتے کا کفن بچی دفنائی گئی اس گری نام تیرا صورت ناد علی دکھ میں دوہر آتی رہی دو نایا غازی جبر دا سر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی دو نایا روی ریحان کلم کر کے یہ بات رکم خون میں دوب گیا میرے غازی کا علم زخمی زینب کا جگر خوف شاشا حق سر آئی خیموں میں شکی تو نہ آیا غازی جبر دا سر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی تو نہ آیا غازی جبر دا سر سے چھنی میں صدا دیتی رہی تو نہ آیا غازی اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد و عجل فرجم